This week on Movie Time Machine, Chad reads the back of a VHS box. And welcome to Movie Time Machine, your retro movie review podcast, where we take movies from the past and relive them in the present. This week's topic, Back of the Box, where I go through my old collection of VHS tapes, why I still have them. I don't know, but I'm going to randomly just grab a video out of there and read what's on the front of the box and the back of the box and just give some quick critic reviews of it and some budget stuff and just read the descriptions on it. So let's carry on this special summer edition of Movie Time Machine. So my first back of the box reading is a VHS tape. I think I bought at like a video store closing in the mid to late 90s. Uh, I probably paid like two bones for it. Uh, It's this movie that I had heard a lot about at the time is a film called Frankenhooker. Now, don't get me wrong. When you first hear that, it sounds like it might be some sort of pornographic film. And I'm going to tell you, you are way. So looking at the front of the box, it says Frankenhooker on the top. Then it has this woman on the front. She looks very Frankenstein-ish and has, has been pieced together, it looks like, with different body parts. Um, so maybe like a different arm, a different leg, um, some interesting, yeah, just wearing what would be a bra, um, almost topless. So yeah, pretty interesting here. Uh, looking at the front, she walking at the subway Then at the bottom in quotes, it says, want a date question mark. And this was produced and distributed by Shapiro Glickenhaus home video. No idea who they are, if they still remain. As I turn it around to the back of the box, uh, there's some, oh, here's an interesting quote taken from Bill Murray. It says, if you only see one movie this year, it should be Frankenhooker. And then from another quote here, it says from Joe Bob Briggs, it says four stars. What, like out of 10, out of five? We don't know. It says four stars. Best of 90. So again, this film came out in 1990. Um, Again, that's from Joe Bob Briggs from the movie channel Drive-In Theater. Okay, let's read the little synopsis here in the back of the box. It says, The Frankenstein legend gets stitched up by the makers of Basket Case and Brain Damage in this outrageous horror comedy when his pretty fiancée, in quotes, goes to pieces... Under the blades of a runaway lawnmower, aspiring mad scientist Jeffrey Franken hatches an unorthodox scheme that brings his beloved back to life. He reassembles his girlfriend from the body parts of New York prostitutes, but his dream girl runs amok on 42nd Street, turning tricks that literally make people's heads spin. Can Jeffrey still find his true love, or has he created a monster? Yeah, there's some... I can't really explain the images on the back, except for there's like one image where there is a brain um, in some kind of encased. Looks almost like a cake case, (laughs) a glass cake case. Yeah, with like an eyeball on it. So it's 1990. It says it's in color and approximately 85 minutes long. So it's a short rant. It's not rated. All right, let's look at reviews on Rotten Tomatoes. It has a 57% Rotten Tomato score, uh, critic score, and a 57% audience score. Slant Magazine gave it a 4 out of 5. And IMDb Average has a 6.2 out of 10. And for box office, Frankenhooker, I could not find any information on the budget for it, but it did make $205,000. Variety wrote, Frankenhooker is a grisly, grotesque horror comedy recommended only for the stout of heart and strong of stomach. Uh, The New York Times wrote that there is a legitimate sense of the absurd lurking within Frank Henenlotter's Frankenhooker, but it is overshadowed by the special effects and elements that recall a softcore pornography. Uh, The LA Times called it a hilarious, totally outrageous grin and gore comedy. 
Frankenhooker was also named Killer Bee Film of the Year for 1990 by E! Entertainment Television, Attack of the Killer Bee segment. Uh, like I said, Bill Murray's quoting saying, if you see this movie once a year, it should be Frankenhooker. Helen Lauder said that Murray had been editing his film Quick Change and hung out with the Frankenhooker crew. After Murray expressed interest in their film, the distributor attempted to get an endorsement for him. Embarrassed that they would abuse Murray's friendliness, Hen and Lauder attempted to avoid Murray. When they eventually ran into each other, Hen and Lauder apologized and explained that he was not responsible. Satisfied with exploitation, and Murray volunteered a quotation. Then on the uh, distribution company, the Shapiro Glickenhaus Entertainment, it was a company formed at the height of the home video industry. Home video industry in 1984, where producer Leonard Shapiro and director James Glickenhaus to produce and distribute low budget horror and action films. Then as the home video industry evolved in the mid 90s, uh, they disbanded in 1995. Uh, Shapiro left the company in 96 to form Root Beer Films, while Glickenhaus joined a finance firm started by his father. Uh, 96, Alan Solomon. He was the executive vice president of Shapiro Glickenhaus Entertainment, along with Elliot Solomon, who founded Amsel Entertainment, which bought the remaining assets of they bought the remaining assets and film catalog of uh, SGE Synapse Films under license from. So it's poorly written. It's hard to read. So they bought the they essentially bought the rights to the films that they were um, distributing. So this is um, Frankenhooker, Maniac Cop. Red Scorpion, McBain, Basket Case 2, Basket Case 3 um, were all released then by as well. Um, then in 2021, actually just recently in April 2021, Troma Entertainment acquired uh, that entire Shapiro Glickenhaus catalog. Yeah, uh, if you want to check it out, not going to do an entire episode or crew on it, but yeah, it's just an interesting movie. If you like that kind of, that, uh, kind of trauma movie, uh, film experience, uh, definitely, it's definitely worth one watch. So that's, uh, reading a back of the box, my VHS collection, Franken hooker, not rated. All right. Thank you for listening to this episode of movie time machine. Just to let you know, you can find us and follow us on Twitter at Movie Machine Pod, and you can send us any questions, comments, or feedback that you have in this episode to Movie Time Machine Pod at gmail.com. Thank you for listening, and have a great rest of your summer. Goodbye.